Many of you have probably seen some Charge Blade speedruns that use Frostcraft recently, and you might be interested in how the hell people can build that. This guide will show you how to build Frostcraft SAD set without crazy speedrunner augments. Here is a set rolled using regular augment and slot plus augment options. I do not recommend skills plus because we rely on dragon conversion and even though skills plus gives you better skills more easily, it always adds on negative 7 LA resistance, which reduces your final element value. You probably need a couple of slots plus pieces if you want to fit every possible skill. I recommend slots plus on the mayo and the gloves since they have the most extra use of skills and slots plus always takes away a skill. Here are the augments and charm. You want to target these skills that can't be slotted as decorations. You will not get the same augments and charm as me, but you should aim to get a total of Dragon Conversion 3, Furious 3, and Frostcraft 1 across all your augments and charm. This may sound daunting, but it's only one skill piece for armor and two on the charm. If you get an extra useful skill on the charm, all the better. The peak performance I have here is useless. Should you still be lacking skills, what you can drop is either Hellfire Cloak or a couple levels of Element Exploit. Everything else that was augmented or slotted is pretty essential. I trust that you'll be able to slot the decos for each element. As for the weapon choices for each element, you have Aurora on the Cant for Ice, the Fish for Water, Nawa for Thunder, with Fire you could either go Ragnar for no Ellen Bane or Rathian with Ellen Bane, depending on the matchup. And for Dragon, you would use Primordial Malzena with this set. Because this set doesn't run Dragonheart, the access to Ellen Bane on Primordial is stronger than access to only Valstrax Soul on the Valstrax Charge Blade. Since Primordial Malzena Charge Blade has so many slots, you can add extra levels of burst, you can add element resistance decos, or you can add a guard up. Because monsters like Gaith Magorm and Primordial Malzeno have guard up requirements on some of their moves. For Dango, you should eat for early resistance in order of lowest to highest resistance. More early res means more element with dragon conversion. You can check your resistances by switching the blue scroll in the training area. As you can see here, I have dragon as the lowest, then fire and thunder, so I'll go eat these Dango in this order. The same goes for resistance decos, add them from lowest to highest. As for the Frostcraft Charge Blade playstyle, you don't need to focus too hard on sheathing the weapon and can play normally while you're learning it. But once you gain enough experience in a certain matchup, then you might be able to identify times where you cheat to charge the bar again and get some extra damage. Here is a gameplay example of me using Frostcraft Charge Blade against Risen Communities. Since I know this monster really well, I know just how much time he takes in between his attacks and all his attack patterns, which lets me safely sheath and get full Frostcraft buff for the next attack. Frostcraft is um, also useful in the opposite case where you don't know the matchup well and get hit a lot because that gives you some free bar regen too. Also note this set comes with Focus 3, which lets you charge files with just a charge flash, no weak slash required. As always, if you guys have any questions, just ask me in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching.